President Muhammadu Buhari statement on restructuring. It is unprecedented and insensitive. Well, Pandev has laid claims. Pan Niger Delta Forum, which is the Pandev and Center for Liberty (CLF), on Sunday described President Muhammadu Buhari's attack on those calling for restructuring as unprecedented and insensitive to the yearning for a better Nigeria. Well, the position of both groups were contained in the statements separately issued and made available to Tribune Online. Pandev National Publicity Secretary, uh, Secretary Honorable Ken Robinson argued that the president's statement indicts not only his party, the All Progressive Congress APC, but himself as well. It speaks to the fact that they are either dishonest or incoherent and confused. On his part, co-convener of Ariyo Dari Atoyebi, who called for caution against anti-people's policies that are capable of quelling crisis across the country. He said, President Buhari and his representative at the event where this, where this unprecedented statement was made are actually the ignorant in chiefs of the Federation because they have consistently and mischievously manipulated history, facts, and knowledge. Isn't it deceptive that the president and his enforcers who want to resuscitate grazing routes for cows that existed when Nigeria was operating a restructured system are the same people opposing the demand for restructuring? Hmm. At this junction, Nigerians should not waste their time dignified this unprecedented remark with a response, but we should learn to tag General Buhari as outgoing president and commence the process of finding and supporting electing a president who believes in restructuring and the supremacy of human beings over cows, Atoebi noted, while frowning at President Buhari's position. Pandev National Publicity, Publicity Secretary underscored the need to address the lopsidedness in the allocation of resources with a view to ensuring justice and equity. He said, how could a president whose party constituted a committee on restructuring that was chaired by one of his governor, Malam Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State, make such comments? The governor El Rufai committee concluded its assignment and submitted a report to the party of which the president is the supposed leader over two years ago. That the president could make such comments, though through a representative at the launch of a peace foundation in Zaria. Cardona State reflects the core of the nation's problem at this time, that it could threaten war and the destruction of livelihoods of Nigerians shows that this presidency is insensitive, callous, and doesn't care about the unity and future of Nigeria. Mr. President did not talk about how to deal with the banditry and increasing kidnap of school children in Kaduna and other states in the Northwest. Rather, he reminded citizens of the nation's military might, military might which he has been unable to deploy to against the terrorists, bandits, and criminals making life unbearable for citizens and undermining the nation's territorial integrity. No responsible government anywhere in the world would make a sanction such gibberish statements against its citizens. We are undoubtedly under a grossly blinkered leadership, sadly to the detriment of the security and welfare of the citizens. Hmm. Buhari does not even care. I don't believe uh, the same Buhari we voted for in 2015, that same Buhari we are having now. May I always say it? His medical report has said it is incoherent and uh, has dementia. He, he, he just living the life like, uh, let me not use that word, he's just living as just a figurehead president. Whatever comes through his mouth is what he says. And I believe he is in support of the Fulani. And as a president or as a leader, you need to be neutral in your judgment. You need to be fair in your governance. You need to carry everybody along, even if you have a, an ulterior motive or you have a negative agenda towards, you know, some part or some tribe, you shouldn't let it be glaring. But Buhari is a very and a wicked and rigid president. As he is, he has, you know, uh, declared himself as a, 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 a genocidic president. Let me use that word. 
Well, continue with what uh, the Pandev are saying, the said, and the so-called Executive Secretary of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, Mr. Shehu Mohamed Bello, could afford to voice the part through remark of uh, be of, uh, on behalf of Mr. President because he is aware of their crook agenda to perpetuate the subjugating and gross injustice against the rest of the country. Let me go through it again so that you understand what I'm saying. He said, and the so-called Executive Secretary of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, RMAFC, Mr. Shehu Mohamed Bello, said could afford to voice the uh, remarks on behalf of Mr. President because he is aware of their crooked agenda to perpetuate the subjugation and gross injustice against the rest of the country, a situation whereby every strategic executive position in the nation's public sector has to be occupied by a northern or by the northerners of which the said Mr. Shehu Mohamed Bello is a prime beneficiary. They are against restructuring because they are benefiting from the flawed military-imposed 1999 constitution. Every month, the 19 northern states receive a minimum of 57% of 100% of oil revenue to which they contribute 0%. Can you hear that? While the South South, which contributes 87%, receives less than 20% out of Nigerian 774 local governments. The 19 Northern states have 400 and, uh, 419 local governments, while the 17 Southern states have 357 local government areas. Every month, the 419 local government area of the 19 northern states with sig insignificant contribution receive 54.9 percent of revenue available to local government areas in the country while the 357 local government areas of the 17 southern states receive just 45.1 percent of what they contribute almost 100 percent meanwhile they restrict the gold and other minerals in the north to themselves and plunder the oil and gas in the niger delta with their cronies that is the Nigeria they want to be sustained. We are saying enough is enough and enough of that. They can easily refer Nigerians to the National Assembly and fantasize about the due process because they know the membership of the National Assembly is also like everything else in Nigeria and lopsided in their favor. Out of the total number of 360 members of the House of Representatives, the South has 169, while the North has 191. Perhaps they need to be informed that the primary issues are not local government autonomy and judicial independence. It is non-sitting to even hear them and nonsensical. Brazilly talk about judicial independence with the administration's record of reckless disregard for the rule of law. The fundamental issue is that there is an over-concentration of power at the center. There are 68 items exclusive to the federal government in the 1999 constitution. That is the problem. Nigeria is in distress, but the federal government has maintained the outstretched policy, refusing to accept the obvious you know, truth and rather uh, embrace you know, nepotism, tribalism, and lopsidedness. Hmm. Can you see the Nigeria that we have today? Their secret is opening gradually. They will be exposed all around. They have contributed 0% mm, to the GDP, to the growth of Nigeria. And they have, you know, eaten and, you know, put uh, all the gold, uh, the resources they have in the north, you know, it's embedded in them. They don't want to release it. And they want to, you know, finish the oil because that's what they are benefiting from. And meanwhile, it is the south that are even generating revenue for the country. Now, northerners are doing nothing. Or the north itself is not doing nothing. They are the most beneficiary. And now you say they shouldn't restructure Nigeria. Well, no. Nigeria must be restructured. And if not, there will be division. That is why they want, you know, to take the Nigerian by force uh, through violence. Hmm. I don't know what your reaction is. I would like you to, you know, pop up to the comment section and, you know, let's hear what you feel about what this Nigeria is going through so that we can tell the world that enough of lopsidedness, enough of Islamization, enough of flanization, enough of uh, greed from the northern part of the country. If there is going to be secession, let it be. And if there is going to be restructuring, let it commence immediately.